the effect of a level of confidence on the margin of error. The width of the interval is determined by the margin of error. The margin of error E in a 1 minus alpha times 100% confidence interval for a population proportion is given by the following. E being the margin of error is equal to the critical Z value times the square root of the point estimate times 1 minus the point estimate over N, which is the sample size. Now let's take a look at an example, which is the role of the level of confidence in the margin of error. In the parent teen cell phone survey conducted by Princeton Survey Research Associates International, 800 randomly sampled 16 to 17 year olds living in the United States were asked whether they have ever used their cell phone to text while driving. Of the 800 teenagers surveyed, 272 indicated that they text while driving. From the last example, we concluded that we are 95% confident that the proportion of 16 to 17 year olds who text while driving is between 0.307 and 0.373. We want to determine the effect on the margin of error by increasing the level of confidence from 95% to 99%. From our previous example, we found that the point estimate was 0.34. That meant 272 divided by 800 gave us 0.34. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to deal with the 95% level of confidence. And recall that alpha is going to equal 100% minus 95%, which is 5%, which gives us 0.05. Now, if we wanted to find that critical value, the critical Z value is taking alpha, which is 0.05, and divide it by 2, and that gives us 0.025. This means that this represents the area that's to the right of the criti Z critical value, which gives us 1.96. So recall that if we take one, okay, which is the area under the curve, and then subtract 0 0.025, that gives us an area of 0 0.9750. So just to recall, whenever we wanna be able to find our uh, critical Z value, then we would take a look at the table. Here's our area of 0 0.9750, and we see that we get 1.9, six okay so that gives us our critical value okay now we want to find the level of confidence in 95 percent so now we want to find the margin of error okay using the 95 percent level of confidence that means that our critical value was given to be the following we know that our critical value was 1.96 so the critical value is 1.96 times the square root of the point estimate now remember the point estimate up here is 0 0.34. So that's point, 0 0.34 times one minus 0.34. And then we're dividing it by the sample size of N. And so remember that N represents 800. Okay, so if we plug this into our calculator, we get 1.96 times the square root of parentheses 0 0.34 times parenthesis one minus 0 0.34, close the parenthesis and close it again for the two left parentheses, and then divide it by 800. And then that gives us the following. It gives us 0 0.033. Now, if you look here, if we round it to three decimal places, we get 0 0.033. Okay, now let's take a look at the 99% level of confidence. So when we're dealing with a 99% level of confidence, that means alpha is gonna equal 100% minus 99%, which gives us 1%, which is a decimal equivalent of 0 0.01. So to find this critical value, we're taking alpha divided by two, which is 0 0.01 divided by two. Now remember, that 0 0.005, when we divide that by two, is the area to the right of the critical Z value. So what we're gonna do is, if we take one and then subtract the 0 0.005, we get 0 0.9950. So we wanna be able to find that on our table. So 0 0.9950, so do we see that anywhere? Well, that means it's in between these two values. And it's exactly the distance from here and here. So we need to take a look at 
the two critical values, 2.57 and 2.58. So we need to find the mean of those two. So we take 2.58 plus 2. Excuse me, 2.57 plus 2.58. And then we're going to divide that by 2. Then we're getting 2.575. So therefore, that's how we're getting the critical value of 2.575. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plug that in now into that formula to you find a level of confidence at 99%. So using the same formula here, okay, we got a critical value now of 2.575. Okay, we know the point estimate stays at 0 0.34, and we know that our sample size is 800. So if we come into our calculator, take 2.575, multiply it by the second square root, okay, left parenthesis 0 0.34, okay, and then again, left parenthesis 1 minus 0 0.34, and then we got to close the two right parentheses, one and then two, and then divide that by 800. We should see that we get 0 0.43, rounded to three decimal places gives us 0 0.43. So what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that the margin of error, okay, the margin of error for the 95% confidence interval found is 0 0.033 for the 95%. And the margin of error for the 99% confidence interval found is 0 0.043. So increasing the level of confidence from 95% to 99% increases the margin of error, resulting in a wider inner confidence interval. Now there's also the effect of the sample size on the margin of error. We know that larger sample sizes produce more precise estimates from the law of large numbers. Given that the margin of error is the following formula from the previous step, we can see that increasing the sample size n in the denominator would decrease the standard error, so the margin of error would decrease because you're dividing by the number and it's making that smaller. Therefore, larger sample sizes will result in narrower confidence intervals. To illustrate this idea, suppose the survey conducted in the previous example resulted in a sample proportion of 16 to 17 year old teenagers who text while driving but the sample size is only 200. The margin of error would then be the following. We would use the critical z value of 1.96 times 0 0.34 times 1 minus 0 0.34 divided by 200 and we would get 0 0.066. Now the margin of error at 95 percent was 0 0.033. So a sample size that is one-fourth of the original size causes the margin of error to double. Put another way, if the sample size is quadrupled, the margin of error will be cut in half.